In this video, we're going to learn about ClickHouse's null table engine. This table engine ignores any data that it receives, which can seem a bit weird at first. But what's cool is that we can still connect materialized views that will be triggered when new rows are inserted. So a common use of the null table engine is routing incoming data to different tables. For example, logging data from different microservices. Let's launch ClickHouse, and then we're gonna describe a logs.json file that I've got on my machine. So you can see it's got a timestamp, a service, a log level, correlation ID, and message. Let's have a look at one of the rows in that file. So you can see we've got a search service. It's got, uh, under the message, it's got a user, and then it's got an ID, of searching available hotels with some criteria, and then it's got some JSON embedded inside the message. Let's have a look at what services we're gonna be dealing with. So we'll also count how many times each one shows up. So you can see we've got a search service, a booking service, and a payment service. Let's update our previous query to show us some records from the search service. So you can see it's user, then their ID, searching available hotels with the criteria. How about if we do the same thing for booking? So this time, slightly different message. There's so still user and then the ID, selected a hotel room with details, and then it's got the details on the end. And then finally, what about the payment service? So this time it's processing payment for a user, it's got an ID, and then it's got the amount. There is also a message with payment failure, but that hasn't showed up in the first three messages here. We're now gonna start by creating a table called log. So this is gonna be the, sort of where the data gets imported into from that file. So our logs table is gonna have a timestamp, service, log level, correlation ID, and message, and then the engine type is gonna be null. So that's mapping exactly to what was in the JSON file. Let's get our earlier query, and we're gonna see how to extract parts of the message. So we're gonna be using the extract all groups function. We'll tell it that the message is not null, and then we're gonna say user, and then we'll capture a group, searching available hotels with criteria, and then another group, and then a period at the end. And that's gonna be the groups column. And then we'll pull out the first value, that's the user ID, and then the second one, and that's the search. And you can see it comes back and we've successfully pulled out the different parts. At the moment, the search is still a string. So we wanna convert that from a string into a map so that it's easier for us to process. And we can use the JSON extract function to do that. And the second parameter is the type that we wanna convert it to. So this is gonna be a map going from a type of string, and then we're gonna use the new variant type and can, because the values can be strings or they can be ints. And it looks exactly the same uh, on the results, but this is now a map type. Now we're gonna create a table called searcher. So this is only gonna contain data for our search services. So we're gonna have a timestamp, we'll have a user ID, a location, the check-in, the check-out, and then the number of guests. Next, we're gonna create a materialized view to write data from the logs table to the search table. So we'll change our previous query. So change that logs.json to logs. So we're gonna be querying that logs table. We'll delete the message. We don't wanna store that. We just wanna capture the timestamp. And then we're gonna wrap this whole query in a CTE called search logs. And then we can say from search logs, we're gonna get the timestamp, the user ID. We'll then read into our map and get the location. And remembering that we need to put as location uh, on the end, we'll do the same for check-in as check-in, check-out and guests. So you need to make sure that the names of the columns that you use here match the ones in the table. Otherwise it will, it will kind of put null values in there instead. And then finally we can go to the top and we're gonna create a materialized view, search as MV into that search as table and we'll run that. Now we need to put some data in. So we're gonna insert into the logs, select star from logs.json and that then imports the data. Now let's write a query. So we wanna see how many searches is each user doing? And then we're gonna kind of have a look at, well, what's the what is the common number of searches that people are doing? And you can see it comes back. So the most common number of searches was five, then 19, and then eight. So that's the search service. Let's do the same for the booking service. So we're gonna create our table bookings. It's gonna have a timestamp, a user ID, a room type, a price, a check-in, and a checkout. And remember, a lot of that data is gonna be pulled out of the message. We'll create ourselves a materialized view, bookings MV, into the bookings table. We'll then create a CTE. We're gonna say it's bookings logs as, and then we're gonna read from the logs table. We'll get the timestamp. We're gonna, then gonna do the extracting the parts of the message. We'll say user, then get a group, selected a hotel room with details, then get the, the JSON, and then the period at the end. And again, we pull out the user ID, and we pull out the booking. And then afterwards, we say from booking logs, get me the timestamp, get me the user ID, from the map, get the room type, get the price, get the check-in, and get the checkout. Now the bookings table won't contain any data at the moment because the materialized view that populates it is only fired when the logs table receives new rows. But what we can do is 
kind of backfill it. So let's take our previous query and we'll change it to say insert into bookings and then we'll just change the from clause so we'll just read directly from that logs.json file and then that will populate our bookings table and we can have a look what's the most common room type how many bookings have been made there and what's the average price that people are paying and you can see it comes back so most people are standard room then deluxe and then suite and you can see the price varies quite a lot we can also then go and import a different file into our logs table. So this one's from the logs new JSON files. This is some different data that I've got. So if we import it in and then we can rerun our room type query and you can see it's now picked up the data from the logs table and put it into the bookings table. So if you only want to store some of the incoming data but don't need to do this clever routing that we're doing, the ephemeral modifier might be a better fit uh, for your import needs. So check out this video to learn more.